Okay, everybody, today's Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. Today, we're gonna to talk about the electrical system. Let's go in the garage. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the resources and techniques that I used for the wiring of this aircraft. Um, I had to do a little bit of homework, do a little bit of studying, and I mean, there's some things I just didn't know, and so uh, it was good. It was a good experience and things I needed to know, and so let me show you some of the books I got. So the Bob Knuckles Aero Electronic Connection is kind of the Bible for wiring an aircraft. It's kind of, it's got everything in here you would ever want to know and uh, more. Uh, I don't want to say it's got too much information, but uh, it's not lacking for anything. So if you're really wanting to get in depth on all the things involved with wiring an aircraft, beginning with just the basics of wiring and electricity, all of those things, it will teach all of those things to you. The, this is more of a kind of a, a shortened version of a wiring book uh, written by Mark Osmond, the Aircraft Wiring Guide. It's just in short form, and it's got a very good uh, layout and descriptions of all the processes. So, you know, between these two books, these, these were the two things that really brought me up to speed. The Aero Electronic Connection book was the the book that helped me decide on what type of a battery I was going to go with and and it describes the different choices but ultimately I went with the uh, the Odyssey PC 680 recumbent gas batteries you know I gotta tell you I could not have done any of this electrical without the help of Jason Smith over at Aerotronics in uh, Billings Montana Aerotronics is the company who built and well they designed and built my instrument panel I had no idea when I received the panel, the the amount of ongoing support that I was going to receive from these guys. In fact, I pretty much assumed that I would just be figuring out what I need to do firewall forward to bring everything in uh, into the cockpit, up to the electrical panel, instrument panel, up to the uh, circuit breakers. I figured I'd have to do all of that myself. So I called Jason one day and he goes, oh, I'll send you a schematic. I couldn't believe it because the schematic he sent me was exactly what I needed. I'll, I'll go over that here in a minute. I'll show you the exact schematic that he sent me because without it, I think I'd still be working on it and probably have had, would, would probably have done it all wrong. So, but first let me show you the, some of the stuff that I got from Aerotronics. So when I received the panel from Aerotronics, I got this book. And this book was very comprehensive in terms of telling me how to do my wiring. The instrument panels that Aerotronics produce are called plug and play. They use what they call a P1 plug that all the wires from the, from the instruments in the panel are terminated in one central plug and then it's up to the builder to bring the rest of those wires to the other side of that plug creating the connection between the instrument panel and the rest of the airplane. So here we have the P1 plug. This side of the P1 plug was pre-wired by Aerotronics, uh, so that was just basically hanging loose, and then after I installed the panel, just brought it up and created sort of a false uh, bulkhead here. These wires are all brought from either the back of the airplane, the wings, or from the engine compartment. These are all electrical. Uh, they could be lights. Uh, I've got both mag, P leads in here, uh, landing lights, taxi lights, strobe lights, beacon lights, uh, other switches. Those are all brought in through here. And so this maps everything out. So P1, position number one, pedo heat. P2, position, P1, position number two is battery one. Step by step, and you complete everything up to the P1 plug. The dining manuals are also important too, because I can see uh, different sorts of. Uh, well, for example, let's look here. This is the sensor connections for uh, the Dynon system. It just basically shows where all the pins are and what is at each pin. So this is a great help. And as I go through here, I can see, you know, if I need, like, for example, uh, this number 14 pin and number 15 pin, that's my fuel flow. So I know that from the red cube, I'm going to bring the white wire up and with the red wire 
and that would go to the P1 plug and then of course from there it goes into the panel and I get my fuel flow reading on the Skyview HDX. As I am doing all of this I'm realizing look I need to start documenting everything I'm doing so I basically put together this book that's just a it, it's it's a documents everything um, all the components essentially so I've got even as much as my alternator belt uh, Odyssey battery information here's information on the red cube fuel flow transducer uh, I've got a current sensor that's going to uh, that's attached at the battery positive position uh, ignition switch it shows me the schematics for the ignition switch uh, here's uh, my alternator uh, contactors battery contactors, starter contactors, really everything. Here's my magnetos uh, and the part numbers, so right mag, left mag, harness number. I'm using Tempest spark plugs. Um, I got a slick start uh, start boost system in here. So really, and I even tabbed an area here for uh, the Tempest plugs. So all of that's been documented. Um, just a great resource if I ever need to come back to it a year or two from now. And then finally, here's the schematic that Jason Smith over at Aerotronics sent me. This is basically everything firewall forward. And then the dash line here indicates where, after it penetrates the firewall, does that connection go. In this system, I have a dual, uh, or I should ha I should say I have a primary and a backup alternator, so those are both indicated. I've got my voltage regulators. All the wires for that are, are indicated. I'm also, uh, it's also showing me from the battery to the starter, uh, battery contactor, starter contactor, all of that. Now, if you'll notice here, it even tells me what the um, recommended wire gauge should be. And by the way, the aero, one of the things I picked up in the aero electric, uh, aero electric connection book from Bob Knuckles is he recommends that you use welding wire for your main wires for your for the for the wires that come from the battery to the starter and to the alternators. So when we're talking cable ties, traditionally we think of these black zip ties. You can get these at the hardware store. Uh, elect electricians use these, uh, and you see them in a lot of airplanes. It's just you know what people use these days. Being that I can't seem to do everything normally, uh, I decided, you know, I'm going to go a little different route. Uh, instead of using cable ties or the traditional zip ties, uh, I am using grip lock ties, which have these silicone linings. They're, they're lined with silicone, and these are actually, uh, you can actually reuse these things. They'll unzip as well as zip. So uh, I use these specifically for taking a wire bundle and attaching it to um, the airframe, a tube or something like that. But before I attach it to the tube, I bundle everything with uh, lacing. This is a polyester lacing here, and um, I'll show you some examples of how that looks. This is old school here. It really slows things down. It slowed down my build for sure, but I don't know. Being the perfectionist, I just like the way it looks. Uh, I love how that lacing ties and, it, and it's not going to tear into the insulation on the wires. I feel like it's, it preserves the life of my wires. I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, wiring, wires getting chafed because of a, because of a, a you know, an edge on a, on a zip tie. So I guess I'm old school, but I like the way it looks and maybe you will too. So those are some things I use to help me with the wiring process. Again, I, I just <laughs> feel, here, I'm not getting paid by Aerotronics. They didn't give me a discount or anything. In fact, they, I might have mentioned to Jason that I was going to make this video, but uh, I'm just that impressed with their service. They delivered the panel and they weren't done with me. In fact, they told me when they delivered the panel, we're now just getting started with our support for you. So. Uh, true to their word, that's what they've been doing. And every time I call them, whether I talk to Jason Smith or somebody else there, they're very friendly. Um, I just cannot speak highly enough about these guys. Let's go take a look at the airplane. I want to show you the wire routing just to get an idea of how it all went. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at all the wiring 
from really just start with the battery and then take it all the way through up through the firewall and over to the uh, instrument panel. So before we get started with the actual wiring, I just wanted to mention that I'm using a, right now I'm using a, a power um, supply, DC power supply, which is running everything. So the you'll see that the terminals here are disconnected for the battery. So essentially what I've got here is a PC680 Odyssey batteries, battery. Um, I'm using the ground, which is called the field of tabs. Got this from uh, BNC. And uh, just basically this lug here is actually attached to the firewall, but there's a tab on the other side uh, for th that attaches to the frame. So I've, ch and I've also checked the ground and I've got zero resistance there. And then I've got an engine ground that comes off of here and attaches onto um, the engine case here. Zero resistance on that as well. Okay, so uh, main two gauge wire coming off the positive lead of the battery comes up here to the battery contactor and then that comes over here to the starter contactor and then the starter contactor again that's a two gauge wire that runs all the way down through here inside I've got some tabs with some Adele clamps in here coming around here you can see where that uh, connects to the, the starter and then on the other side here's the alternator this little coil here is for the landing light which goes on the nose bowl but I've got uh, and I've labeled all my wires too so six gauge wire here goes to the alternator all right if we take a look up here we can see uh, the voltage regulators this is the primary voltage regulator and over here is the standby voltage regulator uh, here are sensors this is going to be oil sensor for oil pressure fuel pressure sensor here and then down here I've got uh, got this little tube connection here I got that from vans uh, sensor connection for manifold pressure on there and of course the corresponding wiring that goes with it we'll go around to the other side here real quick this is the uh, standby voltage regulator and next to it is my start booster this is from champion it's a sure start ignition booster this simply puts uh, it isolates the left magneto during startup puts 25,000 volts into those plugs and then once you release the starter uh, both mags are back on online and they're putting about six to eight thousand volts on each side so just uh, it's to help with hot starts and that sort of thing firewall penetration so I've got three this is the this is the one for the big wires going to the circuit panel uh, from the battery and from the alternator as well as a uh, backup uh, as well as the standby current sensor this firewall penetration here is for all of my sensors my cylinder head temperatures my exhaust gas temperatures are going in through here and then down below it this is my penetration for all the other wires for the lights um, power leads for different things P leads for the for the mags and that sort of thing so that's pretty much all the wiring let me go over here real quick and show here's the wire that comes off of the fuel transducer for fuel flow and then it, the wire comes through the baffling and works its way on and through the firewall where does it go once it gets through the firewall so again so we come through the firewall with the battery lead and the alternator lead those come through here and work their way up and I've got them in somewhat of a coil so that when the panel tilts forward it gives that a little bit of slack and then those just simply come up to the back of the circuit breaker panel I've got a couple of uh, here is my current sensor uh, this is my 40 amp current sensor I was going to pull that off there, but it's on there pretty tight. And then next to it is my alternator shunt. Uh, and then that, of course, goes up to the circuit breaker as well. Here on the other side, we see where the wires come through for the, the uh, EGT and CHT sensors come through here. And then the uh, other wires come underneath here and then up. And then they all flow along and eventually make their way over here to either engine monitor and then up to the P-plug. By the way, you may have noticed 
these fuel lines a little different than what you typically see I'm going to talk about that in another video I've got uh, some really good fuel lines as well as oil lines and then uh, this braided line I'm going to also replace it with a uh, these are Teflon integrated fuel lines and I'll talk about that in another video probably the next video I do will be about the fuel lines all right well here it is this is the final product this is where it all comes together we can see what the instrument panel looks like it's all lit up again I'm on a I'm on a power supply I'm not running off the battery but I've got my uh, iPad Avidyne 540 I'll go over to the other side here in a minute and talk about the circuit breakers and then uh, here's what's interesting all of my gauges are green green in terms of I don't have a big X through there saying that it's not accepting or it doesn't find that uh, it's there's no power running through for that uh, and I what I did was I tested if you look at the CHTs and if you look at the EGTs I, I tested every one of these one two three four five and six cylinder with a heat gun so I made sure I had my sensors in the correct location so I know I, I have exact readings from the exact cylinder. Um, fuel PSI is blinking at me because there's no fuel pressure, which is good. It's doing its thing. Oil temperature is 51 because that's how cold it is in the garage right now. Um, no RPMs, no manifold pressure. Well, a little bit of manifold pressure from the ambient pressure outside. Now, one thing here we'll notice about this, these switches, I did terminate this battery. Um, because I'm only using one battery. Originally, I was going to go with an electronic ignition system. Uh, I'll talk about that in another video. So I'll have another video about the fuel lines and then a, a video also independently about the ignition system that I chose to go with. But I'm not using this battery, so I'm on mag 1 and mag 2 during start. And then when I hit the, when the key hits this start, left mag is isolated, putting 25,000 volts on the left mag plugs. Here's a shot of the uh, circuit breaker panel. Again, I've, I've just eliminated uh, the hot bus because I'm not going to go with electronic ignition at this time. Good news is, if I ever want to, it's ready to go. So that's a plus. I look at that as a glass half full situation. Uh, I, the only thing I've added to this is the standby alternator on light. So how, how does that work? People are asking me, how does, this, how does the backup alternator know when to come on? Well, there's a sensor that, that, that is in line from the main alternator that detects if there is a drop and I forget what it is when it hits a certain number then the standby alternator comes on so when that happens this will flash and tell me that I'm now running on the standby alternator um, so there it is